<laughs> Hello, Floss Tube friends. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Sunday, February 13th at approximately 8.50 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm coming to you today on Super Bowl Sunday. Yes, it's Super Bowl Sunday. And I have to say that I am safe from watching the Super Bowl. I'm not really a football fan. I'm not a Bengals fan. I'm not a Rams fan, even though I grew up in L.A. Um, just not a football fan. So, yeah, I've been avoiding watching the Super Bowl all day long. So I have no idea what's going on. I haven't watched any of the halftime show, anything like that. If you're a fan, hopefully your team is winning. I have no idea what's going on, so I can't even say anything. Just hope your team is winning, and if it's over, I hope your team won. But uh, anyway, it is Super Bowl Sunday. For those of you new to my channel, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you find something here that you can get some inspiration out of or get some enabling out of. Um, this is my channel where I talk about hobbies that I have, including cross stitch. Cross stitch is the main focus of my channel, but I also do other hobbies like uh, diamond painting and crochet. You'll actually see a little crochet later on in this video. Um, and other hobbies like ghost hunting, uh, other paper crafts, uh, you know, some of the sports that I like to watch, including roller derby. I used to be a roller derby skater, for those of you that don't know. Um, I skated for about 13 years and volunteered for about 13 years with our local flat women's, well, it's not women's anymore, but flat track roller derby league here in Columbus called Ohio Roller Derby. Um, I was an original kind of founding skater that skated with our home teams starting in 2005. Our first season was in 2006. Uh, I skated on the Sprockets, which was the space-themed team here in Columbus. And after the first season, I became a skating referee instead of a skater on a team because they were sort of changing the focus a little bit. Plus, I also had a little bit of a knee injury that was kind of keeping me from being able to do a lot of the skating required for the skaters on the teams. So anyway, I went to be a skating referee and a couple years after that I stepped off skates and started doing um, other things like penalty tracking and jam timing and stuff for the league and I fully retired from the league officially in 2018 when my in-laws started having health problems. But yeah, so I am an official roller derby skater. Those of you watching the Olympics know that um, an African-American uh, speed skater, I think it's Aaron Johnson, Aaron Jackson, excuse me, I let me look it up. Um, Aaron Jackson makes history with speed skating gold medal win for US. Aaron Jackson is a roller derby skater also. Um, I'm not 100% sure what roller derby league she skates with or did skate with, but she did skate against our league at some point in time over the last several years. And everybody's really happy that she won gold in speed skating. So congratulations to Erin Jackson for winning gold. The US is doing pretty good in the Olympics this year. I've been watching some of the Olympics um, you all know Nathan Chen won gold in uh, men's figure skating and uh, just everything's going on. But anyway, if you're new here, um, welcome. Hopefully, again, you can find something here that you'll like and it will let you or lead you to want to subscribe. For those of you returning, uh, thank you very much for coming back. It's good to see some good friends. And hopefully, again, you'll find something in this video that you would like to uh, that would enable you to uh, pursue your passion, whatever that may be. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. And it's really great to see good friends again. So if you're... Oh, sorry, I tend to yawn a lot and I'm not sure why. When I turn on the video camera, I tend to yawn and I have a pen in my hand. So yeah, I'm going to be fidgeting a lot. This video is going to be uh, a little bit of a hot mess, I think, because I have a little bit of notes, but I think I'm going to be all over the place. So just a fair warning, I'm going to be all over the place. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to be all over the place. Um, 
If you would like to be notified when I upload new content, I encourage you to click the subscription bell below or the subscription button below and click the notification bell to be notified when I upload new content. Roughly, most recently, I've been uploading new videos about every two weeks or so, give or take. <laughs> um, at work, we started back to the office three days a week this past week. Our days in the office are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I'm not looking forward to having Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday back in the office. Personally, I don't think we need to be there. Uh, there's no reason for us to be in the office. We can do our work just fine remotely. But nonetheless, work is kind of requiring us to be there, which kind of really sucks because it only leaves me Thursday and Friday to work from home. And uh, one of the things you'll notice in some of my videos, see my eyes tend to water. I don't know if you, if the video actually picks them up, but if you see me wiping my eyes, it's because my eyes are watering. Um, but anyway, so we started back to work oh, with the yawning. Oh my goodness. Sorry, you guys. Um, just drinking a little water here. But um, anyway, um, we started back to work. And I don't know uh, what the work schedule is going to mean. Um, got a lot going on this month, um, as you will hear later on in the video. But um, yeah, there's uh, quite a bit going on. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about um, some January numbers. I have some January stitching numbers for you. I'm going to try and make that um, a monthly, probably the first video of each new month. I'm going to be doing the numbers and wrap up oh excuse me the numbers and wrap up for the previous month so this month uh today's video i will be giving you some stats for my january stitching i was it was a little more impressive than i thought it was um so yeah i'll be doing that including some goals that i have and whatnot so um i will be going over some goals some um stats, some updates, um, and some plans going on in the next few months, including a couple of retreats that I'm going to, and I will be showing you progress since my last video and some of the, oh goodness, not only that, I'm burping. We had subs and chips and pickles for, um, dinner tonight. So yeah, I have the whole, you know, sub thing going on, but anyway, enough about that. So yeah, I've got uh, quite a bit here for you today and it might seem a little jumbled and I'm sorry for that, but I'm not really sorry because I'm not editing this video. So you'll just have to get me <laughs> as I am tonight. Um, I had a very early morning this morning. We, uh, you know, I play handbells in my church handbell choir and we had our first rehearsal on Thursday night. Thursday nights is our rehearsal night. We had our th first rehearsal Thursday night and we played at church this morning. The song that we rehearsed Thursday night. So, I had a, ooh, oh goodness, I really hate the fact that I'm yawning in these videos and I don't know why. Um, it, just, it seems to be every time I start a video, I yawn. <laughs> but anyway, so Bell Choir today, um, Bell Choir starting back up. They've eased the um, restrictions at church. They had canceled in-person church services uh, for January and um, the first weekend in February because of the high COVID numbers here in Columbus. And um, they are uh, getting back into in-person church service. There goes my eyes again. My eyes are watering. Sorry, you guys. But um, yeah, sorry. Um, so bell choir play today. So I had to be out the door at church by 8.30 this morning. So I'm going to be uh, kind of getting a little tired. So I don't think, oh, oh my goodness. So there I go yawning again. I don't think the fact that it's nine o'clock and I've been up for, uh, 12 hours. I don't think I've been up, you know, I've been up for 13 hours. I don't think my yawning has anything to do with that. I tend to yawn in my videos. You'll see that if you watch any of my other videos, but, um, anyway, so 
what I'd like to do today, let me go ahead and uh, talk to you about some interesting things. So there's a little bit of news. Um, those of you that are in many Facebook groups or um, know, you know, that you know many different companies, you know that there's a company called the Black Needle Society and they're well known for their kind of subscription box type things or their retreats in a box. Well, they are actually having a physical in-person retreat that they just announced. Um, registration is now open, I believe, to the public. Um, they gave it to their, they first opened the registration to their box subscribers first, but the oh, retreat is going on August 4th through 7th at Stony Creek Hotel in Independence, Missouri. I am not going to go, um, but I just figured I would put that out there that the Black Needle Society is hosting a retreat um, August 4th through 7th in Independence, Missouri. So you can either look them up or I will try and remember to put the link in the description box below for you um, and you can look and go. So while we're on the thing of retreats, I'll go into a little bit of my upcoming plans for the next several months. So um, my husband and I are pretty big into board gaming and we belong to, or we have belonged to a local group called Columbus Area Board Game Society, also known as CABS, C-A-B-S. Um, we used to go on Friday nights um, well, the first and third Friday night of the month, we used to meet with over a hundred other people and sit and play board games most of the night. We were members for that of that group for quite a long time. And being members of that group, we got to go to Origins Game Fair, which is an international game show that's held here in the Columbus area, usually in June, in and around June. Um, and... <laughs> It has over like 15,000 attendees at this four day board game convention. Um, that is happening again in June. It is June 8th through 12th here in Columbus. Last year it was in October because of pandemic issues and everything, they had to push it back and reschedule it. So this year Origins Game Fair is happening in June. My husband and I will be going to that. I, our local game group cabs, um, has an offshoot group called Buckeye Game Fest and Buckeye Game Fest organizes the volunteers for the Origins Game Fair boardroom and also for their own mini board game convention called Buckeye Game Fest. It's normally held in October, November every year, but this year they've, um, because they haven't had it since 2019, no, 20. 2019, they haven't had it since 2019 um, because of the pandemic. They are hosting it in April. So Buckeye Game Fest is happening in April. I am volunteering for that. Um, I believe it is, um, let me see if I can pull up calendar on my phone. Oop, not that one, no, not that one. Come here, calendar, April. It is the 7th through the 10th um, here in Columbus. It's Buckeye Game Fest, and it's downtown at the Hyatt um, Regency, you know, area, um, downtown near the Columbus Convention Center. So um, I'll be uh, volunteering for that on Thursday night and Friday. So that's kind of, kind of fun. Um, for stitching retreats. Um, in September, my local needle workshop here in Columbus, Cross My Heart Limited, is hosting their Camp Gotta Stitch. They don't have any information ready for it yet. Registration hasn't started, but they do have the dates um, set. The dates are September 30th through October 2nd. Mom and I are going to be going, and um, as soon as registration is open, I will let you know. You can also call Cross My Heart Limited here in Columbus and um, get in touch with them to be put on the, the mailing list, so to speak, for Camp Got a Stitch. So this year's Camp Got a Stitch is September 30th through October 2nd. And mom and I will be going. 
Also, um, those of you that watch my channel know back in December, Mom and I went to a new retreat called Stitching in the Springs. It was in Yellow Springs, Ohio, which is about an hour drive west of Columbus. And it was held the first weekend in December last year. Well, they got feedback from the organiz organizers of the retreat, got feedback that um, having it so close to Christmas made it difficult for quite a few people to attend. So this coming year, they are hosting it November 4th through 6th um, at the... Oh, I can't even remember the hotel. Um, it's in Yellow Springs. Um, I don't even have it. I don't even have the hotel. <laughs> I think it's the Mills Park, Mill, Mills Park Hotel in Yellow Springs. <laughs> I'm sorry if I got that wrong. I'm so, so sorry. Um, all right. It's the Mills Park Hotel. Yep. Mills Park Hotel. I just looked it up in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Um, they are having the retreat again, and it, it's November 4th through 6th. Like I said, this video is going to be kind of all over the place and kind of messy. So I'm sorry about that. Not sorry. That's just, you know, kind of how I am tonight. It's just kind of how I've been feeling lately. I've been feeling stretched and pulled in a bunch of different directions. So anyway, um, <laughs> more recent more recent things. Happy Valentine's Day to those of you that are going to be celebrating tomorrow. Happy Valentine's Day to all my friends who, uh, you know, don't have anybody to celebrate with. One other thing, Thursday, the 17th, this coming Thursday, my husband and I are celebrating our 26th wedding anniversary. We got married in 1996 here in Columbus. So Thursday night is our wedding anniversary. And I have the day off, um, but I'm going to be picking up my husband from work early. And we are going to go hang out and go to dinner at the Melting Pot. The Melting Pot is a fondue restaurant. Um, it's a really nice restaurant. But dinner takes you about three hours because, you know, you sit, and, you know, at a fondue table and you sit and cook your food and everything like that. So it's about a three-hour experience. We really like it, but... We're going to dinner Thursday night at the Melting Pot. So there is that. Happy anniversary to us. All right. So that's kind of most of my plans, my big plans and retreats. So we have the Black Needle Society retreat that was announced. It's coming up in August, August 4th through 7th at the Stony Creek Hotel in Independence, Missouri. Camp Gotta Stitch is happening September 30th through October 2nd. And Stitching in the Springs Retreat at Mills Park Hotel in Yellow Springs, Ohio is happening November 4th through 6th. So um, I will be putting information on how, how you can get in contact with those groups down below. Ooh. And um, hopefully we can see you there. Again, I won't be going to the Black Needle Society Retreat. It's just not in, in the budget. So, all right. I am actually going to show you and talk to you a little bit today about a different little craft. Um, I'm involved in a couple of different cross stitch Facebook challenge groups where they either every week or every month, they um, come up with some prompts that you find some of your stitching projects and stitch a certain amount of stitches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A certain amount of stitches on your projects every week or every month and um, you post your progress and you can get stuff. One of the Facebook groups that I'm in is Magical Stitches Mystery Year. Um, those of you that have been in this group before know that it was originally started based on the Harry Potter, Harry Potter series of books. I am not a Harry Potter fan. I haven't read any of the books and at this point in time I'm probably not going to. Um, Yes, it has something to do with the author's political views and some of the stances the author has come up with and voiced over the last couple of years, um, just so you'll know. Um, but anyway, this year, usually the premise of the group is they pick a series of books for the year and then they read the books and then they stitch prompts every week or every month or both. Mm. 
good thirsty guys i'm sorry not sorry um but they stitch on prompts based on the um themes in the book it could be characters what characters are doing some of that some of the happenings in the books so this year we are reading um a series of cozy mysteries by an author by the name of Amanda Lee and the cozy mysteries are an embroidery murder mystery series the first book is the quick and the thread by Amanda Lee and you can see I'm just over halfway through the book um, these are usually quick reads because they're cozy mysteries they're really really pretty fast so I haven't I haven't been pushing through the book very fast but anyway this is the book we're reading this month um so all of our weekly prompts um we get four prompts every, we've been getting four prompts every week um are based on what is happening in the book um at any given time and she cut the prompts are kind of chronological so um for this week one of the prompts is to one of the prompts this week is to work on any type of needlework it could be crochet knitting whatever um, and all you have to do to, on that project is show noticeable process progress oh sorry show notable progress so um, there's an organization here in Columbus called my very own blanket and my very own blanket provides blankets to youth in foster in the foster care system they have been working with organizations all over to provide blankets to other foster care organizations but basically um, when a child goes into foster care um, usually they go with basically nothing but the clothes on their back and sometimes it's not even that sometimes it might be just socks and underwear and a pair of pants or a jacket or something so the kids basically get put on, into foster care with basically nothing um, and the lady that started my very own blanket she noticed that there was a very strong need for um, an organization or some sort of group to gather and or make and or collect something that the foster kids could take with them that is theirs and theirs alone um, so she decided that giving everybody a blanket would be the best thing it's like giving everybody a hug so she started this group called my very own blanket to donate blankets to kids in foster care so a foster a foster child or a foster youth can come into their location and see the beautiful fleece blankets that are or quilted blankets or crocheted blankets or you know whatever kind of blanket they have they can pick a blanket of their very own to keep forever um, and it, it basically just kind of gives the child another come it's like a comfort blanket more or less gives them a a warm hug and lets them know that there's people out there that care that they've never met um, people out there that care so I've been following this group for um, a number of years now and uh, they've done a few events where they teach you how to um, cut and tie um, swaths of fleece um, you know fabric chunks um, cut and tie the um, two of the ends on fleece blankets to be given to the kids in foster care well over the last couple of years I have purchased one and a half yard pieces of fleece and because of this prompt this week I started a blanket my goal this year for 2022 I haven't had one of these goals yet um, for this organization but my goal this year is to donate 24 blankets which is two blankets a month um it is february and i'm behind i haven't donated them yet i kind of want to get a few blankets ready to go um but anyway i do have a stack of um fleece blankets um so here is my stack of fleece blankets that i have lined up and ready to 
uh, either crochet or cut and tie um, ready to go to um, get ready to go to my very own blanket but um, anyway for the pro the fourth prompt this week for crochet or other needlework um, I have to be careful with this because my I'm still not finished with it and my yarn is in here so I am crochet crocheting an edge on this piece of fleece blanket so this is um, this is the blanket that I chose it is a pa very nice pastel kind of um, you know solar eclipse kind of kind of thing and you can see I've gotten this edge here crocheted already I'm just doing a scalloped edge on it I use white yarn to um, do the edges and the way that I do it I have it what's called a skip stitch blade that puts these holes in the blanket that you initially crochet through um, your first round of crochet you fold down you put the holes in the blanket about an inch into an inch in from the edge of the blanket and then you can crochet and as you cro crochet the um, blanket naturally folds down so it makes like its own little hem so anyway um, this is a one and a half yard piece of fleece and my my yarn just went under the floor so you can see there's my stitch markers for the side that I'm working on right now and um, but anyway so this is my um, this is one of the blankets that I am doing for my very own blanket and it is um, it is fun it's something different to do every month or once in a while so I am hoping to have this done um, by the end of the month I should have this done by the end of the month um, I don't know exactly when yet I'm going to donate um, to my very own blanket um, the ones that I have finished I have I think two upstairs that are done this will make my third one um, one of them I did I started a couple years ago but I finished it last year um, I just haven't been really getting into um, doing it I kind of got out of the want to do it but um, with the prompt in magical stitches I went ahead and um, picked picked this one out so I started this on Friday I um, put the holes in the fabric and stitched stitched everything up between Friday and this afternoon so that is uh, one of the prompts in magical stitches I will put some information down below for my very own blanket But like I was saying, I will put some information down below in the description box for my very own blanket so you can get some get a better idea about the organization and what they do for the youth in foster care here in Columbus and in other parts of the nation if you're so interested. Um, I would be willing to take... Um, there are ways that you can help me with my goal of 24 blankets this year. Um, but if you'd like to donate your own blankets, uh, I would encourage you to get in touch with the organization below. They can kind of tell you how to get involved in your own area if you're not local here to Columbus. Or, you know, you can reach out to me. Um, there's um, there's a couple of ways that you can help. So if you just reach out to me, I will um, let you know kind of some of the ways that you can help um, with me. I thought it would be kind of fun to maybe get a local group together once or twice a month, once or twice a quarter, maybe, and um, just kind of make blankets since I've been with the organization and I've been to a couple of the work events for them. I kind of know kind of what they're looking for for blankets and how to tie the blankets if you don't want to crochet and whatnot. So um, yeah, I've been kind of thinking about getting a group together for that. So that is one of my things for my stitching, for my stitching Facebook groups this month. All right. So I have my uh, clipboard. This is my stitchy chair clipboard. And this cover sheet here shows all the days of the month and the days that I have stitched. The days with the dashes. This is all of January right here. Whoops. This is all of January right here. 
Um, you can see here I have this Thursday and Friday marked off. I have those two days off at work. Thursday's our anniversary. Probably not going to stitch there. I did not stitch the first three days of February. This is February here. Um, and I crocheted Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I did not stitch. So technically it was for um, a stitching challenge, but yeah. So anyway, that is that. Um, yeah. So um, been doing pretty good this month. So now that you've seen, this is what I keep by my, um, by my stitching chair. I write down the project that I'm working on that night and how many stitches I put in. Um, because most of the Facebook challenge groups that I'm in, most of the challenges, they need to know a stitch count. So this will also help me at the end of the year so I can tally up what projects I've worked on and whatnot. So I have my January paperwork here for you. Um, based on the listing of the um, stitches that I have. So for January, um, all right. So in the month of January, I worked on five different projects for the month of January. <clears throat> the five projects I worked on for January were Stone Hearth Hutch. That is in the Just Cross Stitch magazine. Um, Four Seasons by Heaven and Art Designs, Jessica Yerka. Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace. Um, Hidden Harbor by Heaven and Art Designs. Fudgy Mint Moose by Glendon Place. I already said Santa. Did I say Santa of the Forest? No, I didn't say. Yes, I did say Santa of the Forest. Yep, Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace and Hidden Harbor. So those were the five projects I worked on. For the month of January. Month of January I had 5,395 stitches. Almost 5,400 stitches for the month of January. That's pretty good. Um, Stone Hearth Hutch is the project that I stitched the most on. Stone Hearth Hutch had 1,427 stitches in it for the month of January. And that was also a Whipgo piece. Do do do. Yep, Stone Hearth Hutch was also a Whipgo piece, and so was Blendin Places Fudgy Mint Moose. Um, for Stone Hearth Hutch, the goal on that was a thousand stitches. So I knocked that out of the park. And my highest day of stitching for the month of January was January 22nd. I only put in 477 stitches on that day. Um, for me, any day that I stitch above 300 is really, really good. Um, I tend to usually only stitch for maybe two or three hours max a night, and that includes weekends, mainly because, you know, by the time I get to stitching, it gets to be 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and, you know, I try and go to bed by midnight. So, um, yeah, I, I don't get very much stitching done in the evenings and even on weekends we're really really busy so I only get a couple of hours of stitching a night if that so to put in 5400 stitches and you know 477 stitches in one night that's a marathon stitching um, night for me so that was January 22nd and that kind of wraps up January's January's things so that is January wrap up five projects 5,395 stitches, Stone Hearth Hutch with the highest stitch count at 1,427 stitches, and my highest stitching day was 477 stitches on January 22nd. So look for more stats coming up at the beginning of March, the first um, episode in March. Hopefully I'll have the February stats for you, and I'll kind of keep this up as a new thing going forward. All right. So for February, we have um, a couple of different things going on for the month of February. Um, there we go. I did stitches. Okay. That's what I'm looking for right there. So 
Everybody knows that I am in, well, if you're new to my channel, um, you may know of WhipGo. WhipGo is a uh, stitching challenge or goal event that a woman by the name of Jessie Marie Sites, Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on YouTube, Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She started this um, thing that she termed Whip Go. It's like bingo for your whips, your works in progress, um, as a way to kind of encourage herself to get out there and get some work done on some of her whips. So um, what you do is you create a bingo board, and it's called Whip Go. So it's just like it's just like bingo for your whips. And every month, Jessie Marie randomly selects two numbers. Now there's 25 spaces on the board. So each month, you'll pull two numbers. So there's 24 opportunities to work on a whip. Most people leave the very middle box, box number 13, as a free space. So the month that the free space is called, the month that square 13 is called, Jesse will pull a second or a third number for that month. Last year, 13 was called in January. So in January last year, we had three numbers. So this year, um, January's, January's number was box two and box 19. Two and 19, Glendon Place and Stone Hearth Hutch. I did complete both of those in January. Now, WIPGO, you can do your board any way you want. Um, you can set your goals any way you want. You can change your goals. You can change your whips. You can do anything you want on your board throughout the year. It's your board, your rules. My goals that I have written down on these are for the entire year. They're not just for that month that that's called. So for February, we have Stitch Rovia, Let It Snow. And full coverage piece of choice, a whip or a new start. That is up here. Um, I pulled out Stitch Rovia. I am currently in the process of doing that. My goal for that is to finish it. I just kind of want to get it out of my rotation. And the only way that I think I can get it out of my rotation and feel good about it is to finish it. Um, I probably have about half, not quite half of it done. But it's a quick stitch. It's going pretty good. So... Anyway, I will be showing you that. Um, and I have not yet decided what my full coverage piece for this is going to be. It might be Heaven and Earth Designs Hidden Harbor because that is my 22K in 2022 focus piece. That is 22,000 stitches in 2022. That is for um, Stitch Talk Hade Challenge Group, I think. Or maybe it's Full Coverage Fanatics. It might be Full Coverage Fanatics um, Facebook group. So that is my whip go. Um, Magical Stitches, we are reading The Quick and the Thread by Amanda Lee. And this week's other weekly prompts were Stitch on a Whip with a Fairy, Stitch on a Whip with a Creature that Lives in the Water, and Stitch on Something Related to Fashion. All right, so I will get into... Um, I will get into some other things. So last week's prompts for Magical Stitches was stitch on a whip with a dog, a fox counts, relate a whip to the number seven, stitch on a whip with at least four squares, and a whip must have something you could order from Mackenzie's Mocha, which is one of the places, one of the establishments in the book, or Brew Crew, which is another establishment in the book that we're reading. Um, choose one. So I will go over what I worked on. So on uh, for prompt number one, stitch on a whip with a dog. I didn't have anything um, that I could really consider that I wanted to work on. I did want to start... Um, a Year in the Woods, The Fox, but um, I didn't have the fabric for it just yet um, and everything like that. So I was kind of going through my stuff. And then I found this Mill Hill kit in my stash. So I ended up starting this. I only needed to put 100 stitches in. So we have the Jim Shore 
Mill, the Mill Hill Jim Shore Puppy. So I worked on, I started this on February 4th. So this is a new start for me for 2022. And let me use the board. This, that is the back. There we go. Ugh. And my floss is all tangled. There we go. Let me go ahead and put this over there. Oh. Yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, well. All right. So we have Jim Shore Puppy. This was a new start. I am using the perforated paper and the floss that came in the kit because this was a full kit. The Jim Shore Puppy. And this is where I got it. 100 stitches in. So I was working on his scarf. This is his, this is his scarf. And I am using the perforated paper that came with the kit. So that was my start. For prompt number one, stitch on a whip with a dog for magical stitches. That is book one, task one. Um, task, each task has four prompts in it. So this was book one, task one. Number one, stitch on a whip with a dog. Um, number two was relate a whip to the number seven. So for this one, I have a black and white picture. I don't have, well, I can show you. Um, so this one, actually, I finally was able to relate the number seven to Stitch Rovia's Let It Snow. Do I have it on here? No. Okay. So, um, many of you that have been around uh, Cross Stitch for a while know that Etsy is a really good place to purchase patterns. And there's a designer out on Etsy called Stitch Rovia. Come on. Okay. Uh, Stitch Rovia, they have a pattern called Let It Snow. And they started Let It Snow a couple of years ago. Here go. So this is Stitch Rovia's Let It Snow. Many of you have seen that. Now, how I tied this to the number seven, if you look on the pond, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven kids on the pond. So I used Let It Snow to stitch my hundred stitches on um, a whip re related to the number seven. So here is my lovely <laughs> plaid project bag. Okay. So this is Stitch Rovia Let It Snow where I'm at. Um, I have you can see down at the bottom, I have most of the border done. Um, most of the border up here at the top is done. And um, so where I was when I started, I had some of the light blue in the, you can see the light blue stitches in the letter here. This is the letter L for let it snow. Um, all my 100 stitches is here in the letter that I did complete for, um, they relate to the number seven. So this is also where I'm at for WhipGo. So you can kind of see I'm just over 100 stitches into WhipGo, but I do have quite a bit more to do. Let me see if I can get this up here and show you. So I do have quite a bit more to do because you can see I have the one tree on the one side done. I have all the lettering to do. I have all the buildings to do and I have all the kids skating on the pond to do. And then I have to do the board, the white border along the bottom, the deco border. Oof. So the deco border that is down here, that deco border I have to do. So my goal for WhipGo is to finish Let It Snow by Stitch Rovia. And you can still get the pattern on Etsy. 
but this is Let It Snow by Stitch Rovia. And this is just a bubble tea needle minder. I don't remember exactly where I got the bubble tea magnet or pin at, but I converted it. I put a neodymium magnet on the back of it and converted it to a needle minder. I clipped the pin back off of it and then glued, hot glued, um, or E6000 glued a neodymium magnet on the back of it to turn it into a needle minder. But that's just a bubble tea needle minder that um, I made. So Stitch Rovia let it snow. Uh, prompt number three, week, book one, task one, prompt number three, stitch on a whip with at least four squares. So stitching on a whip with at least four squares. Was. Ugh. Saltwater scrapbook. The Saltwater scrapbook is a collaboration piece between Lindy Stitches and the Blue Flower. So each each one of them did um, kind of pieces of it. I am doing them all on one together like that. So this one has nine squares, has at least four squares. So I am stitching all of them like that. The fabric that I am stitching it on is fabrics by Stephanie, colorway Silver Mist, 40 count linen, and I'm using the Called for Weeks and DMC. Um, and I bought the project bag. <laughs> um, when the patterns came out last year, I got them with the project bag and the linen um, and everything ready to go. So, yeah, ready to go. Um, so I might have to edit that out because you can kind of see, well, you're not going to be able to get much out of that. Um, but anyway, so beforehand, where I was before I started working on this was the red here. I did all the red for the prompts this week that I was working on. Um, the red is the octopus in the sand castle. Sorry about that. So I will show the big picture. So there's the octopus. So you can see I'm working on the octopus, this one here. So it's the octopus in the sand castle. And all my stitches are the red stitches. I had the rest of this done last year when I started it. But this is on Silver Mist 40 Count Linen by Fabrics by Stephanie. So, really liking the 40 count. I'm gonna try and get more 40 count fabric um, because I'm really loving working one strand over one. So that is variegated one strand. One strand over two, rather, on 40 count. So I'm looking forward to actually getting this done. So yeah, there is that. That is my whip related to the number. Oh, that is a whip with at least four squares. Okay. Do, to do, to do. And the fourth task in book one, task one, is whip must have something you could order from Mackenzie's Mocha or Brew Crew. So last year, hands-on design came out with a nice nifty little pattern called the Cookie Exchange. And I pulled it out to stitch on it. I got the fabric and the um, bits, the, the floss tags, um, for the cookie exchange. So these are the floss drops that came for the cookie exchange. I simply wrote down using a Sharpie marker that you can 
um, wipe off with uh, san hand sanitizer or um, alcohol and uh, put my floss on the floss drops. I am using the Fabrics by Stephanie Vintage Tiffany uh, 32 count Lugana for it. And this was a new start um, for me. So new start, I actually started with the cookies here on the tray and then worked on the tabletop. So I also have a needle minder to go with the cookie exchange. This is hands-on design cookie exchange. This was, what must have something you could order from McKenzie's Mocha or Brew Crew. I went with cookies, cookie exchange. So this was a new start. I started this on February 5th this year. So this was a new start for me, February 5th. Hands-on design cookie exchange. So Magical Stitches book one, task number two, also had four prompts. I showed you the first prompt, or the, fir the first one, or the first one I showed you was work on any type of needlework. The crochet that I'm doing around the fleece blanket, that is, um, that is what I'm working on for that. So the first prompt is stitch on a whip with a fairy. This is one that I haven't worked on in a little while. Um, stitch on a whip with a fairy. I went with Mirabilia's September Sapphire Fairy. She is the one in the kimono. Okay, Mirabilia, September Sapphire Fairy. I had her on my Q snap when I was working with her, but I took her off. It was the Q snap that um, I have saltwater scrapbook on right now. But uh, anyway, so this is where she is at. This is a piece of lavender. I believe this is 28 count linen, but I don't know the colorway. So where I started, all my stitches are in this light green right here, all the way down here in this whole section right here. So we have all of, all of the light green right here and all of this were part of the um, stitching I did for this. So that was Stitch on a Whip with a Fairy. That was my, that was my selection for that task. <clears throat> Again, I don't know the exact um, linen that I'm using. This was a piece that I actually started quite a long time ago. So, um, yeah. Did I write down when I started this? No. It was started sometime after 2011. That's all I know. The called for class. I'm not very far on it. But, there's that. The next task was, or the next prompt, was stitch on a whip with a creature that lives in the water. Four squares. You know what? I actually was very quite wrong. The uh, saltwater scrapbook was not the one I decided to stitch on that had four squares. I don't remember which one that was. Nope, that wasn't saltwater scrapbook because I used saltwater scrapbook for this other prompt. I'm sorry about that, you guys. I don't remember which one I used for the um, stitch on a whip with at least four squares. Um, let me pull that up. <laughs> sorry about that, you guys. All right. Oh, this is going on almost an hour already. Um, doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Stitch on a lease with four squares. Oh, it was the cookie exchange.
yep, it was a cookie exchange because I, I, I liked stitching on it so much. Um, I ended up putting over 300 stitches in it, a hundred stitches for the cookies from that you could order from, uh, Mackenzie's Mocha. And then I got to pick any of my other favorites for, um, 200 stitches for that month or any, any piece I wanted to work on. And since I was having so much fun with the cookie exchange one, I just kept it going for the, uh, third prompt in book one, task one stitch on a whip with at least four squares, I decided to put in another 200 stitches in the cookie exchange. So I was able to get the cookie, most of the cookies and the little tray underneath the cookies that's sitting on the table. Um, all of that was about a hundred stitches and then 200 stitches was the tabletop that I completed. So it was just over, it's 320 stitches, give or take for the cookies, the tray and the tabletop that I completed. So that is what I worked on for that. So, um, <clears throat> task, uh, prompt number two for book one, task two this week was stitch on a whip with a, with a creature that lives in the water. That's when I put the hundred stitches on, um, the octopus from saltwater scrapbook. Um, then prompt number three was stitch on something related to fashion. Um, the September Sapphire fairy because she's wearing a kimono and a kimo kimono is fashion. She's wearing s some sort of kimono. Um, I stitched another hundred stitches on the Sapphire Fairy. So I have just over 200 stitches on the Sapphire Fairy for um, prompts one and three this week. And then the fourth one was um, work on any kind of needlework. To so the end of last month, um, what you didn't see is, um, cause I think I filmed my last video on the 23rd or something right around there. So I got to work more on Hidden Harbors and Santa of the Forest at the end of last month. So Santa of the Forest, this is by Lavender and Lace. I'm not going to show you the whole thing undone. Well, I'll show you all my stitching. So this is all the stitching that I've done on Santa of the Forest. So I have everything basically below his beard completed. Sorry, you guys, I don't, I need, I need to get myself one of those boards made, but where most of my stitching was, um, for the month of January on this was done in his beard, the white of his beard. It was basically all this whole section right here is where I was working on it. So. There you go. So I'm very, very, just kind of filling in his beard. So that was, uh, the progress I made at the end of the month on, um, Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace. And then the other update that I have is Hidden Harbor. So for Hidden Harbor, um, I am doing this on 32 count easy grit, easy, easy count fabric. And I am parking. So basically for the month of January, I put in over a thousand stitches. So I put in quite a few of the diagonal pieces and you can see, um, the oranges down here. Um, in it, it'll be, uh, I'll be getting into the, the mountaintops here pretty soon. Um, I can show you Hidden Harbor. Um, just so you'll know what it is. Come on. Boop, 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 boop. mock up. This is Hidden Harbor by Heaven and Earth Designs. So where I'm working at is over here. Oh, over here on this side, I'm working in this corner. So I'm working diagonally. So I'm coming down this way. So pretty soon here, I'll be able to get into 
the mountain. So I'm starting to get into the oranges over here where my finger's at. So pretty soon I'll be able to hit the mountain. And I'm kind of excited for that. This is going to be fun. So. But anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much where I'm at as far as my stuff goes. So for the next week's prompts, um, book one, task three, prompt number one is stitch on a whip with a bee, which I don't have. Um, I'm not big into bees. So I'll probably just pick a project, maybe cookie exchange again, maybe saltwater scrapbook. I don't know. Um, stitch on a whip with Santa Claus. Santa the forest would be a perfect one. I'll get a hundred more stitches done on his beard. Stitch on a whip that's part of a stitch along. Um, I don't know if Hidden Harbor would be considered that, but Hidden Harbor, because I am kind of in a stitch along with Noah from Noah Stitches and uh, the Crafty Curator on that. Um, and then task four or prompt four is stitch on a whip you started because of someone you know. <laughs> that could also be Hidden Harbor <laughs> because I started that because of Noah. Um, so the last the last week of prompts, book one, task four, the last week of prompts, they're kind of holding off because people haven't finished necessarily finished reading the books. They're not going to want to give you a spoiler. So the prompts for the last week of the month for Magical Stitches will be coming out soon. So... I don't know what I'm going to be stitching on 100% for that, but I'm also going to be working on um, Let It Snow and figuring out what um, full coverage piece I want to work on. It'll probably be Heaven and Earth Designs Hidden Harbor, uh, frankly, because that is my 22,000 in 2022 focus piece for um, full coverage fanatics. All right. <clears throat> so for pop culture stitching challenges this month, the uh, acrostic is Galentine. Um, I have two finished already. Let it snow and cookie exchange by stitch. Let it snow by Stitch Rovia and cookie exchange by Hands on Design. Magazine monthly challenge. The theme for the month is food. Um, I was gonna start. The Batty Bakery by Frosted Pumpkin by uh, that was in one of the Halloween issues or one of the Just Cross Stitch magazine issues. Um, a little teeny square. It's called Batty Bakery Frosted Pumpkin. I was probably going to start that, but um, I don't know yet if I am. I have the fabric for it, I believe, but I don't know yet. I haven't really kind of sat down and figured it out so that could be another new start that comes up and it'll also be a quick finish I think because it's just a little square um, the acrostic for magazine monthly challenge this month is yummy y-u-m-m-y -M -M I haven't tied anything to that yet <laughs> so I'm doing really bad at um, that so here is here is what I have I have one yummy cookies by hands-on design cookie exchange I have that completed I completed that February 5th for 200 stitches so I only have one letter done in the magazine monthly challenge the cross stick for the creatively crafting um, free cross stitch challenge group here is the February, you have the stitching log, you have the February challenge, um, then they have the, um, oh, come on, then they have the stitch count, 5,400 stitches for the month, no, 4,000 stitches for the month of February. If I do like I did in January, I can easily get that. And then they have February Stitch-O with the different prompts. I have some of the prompts completed. The only way that you can get the, um, the February, uh, the monthly um, stitching goals for Creatively Crafting is to be, um, to go to their Facebook group, Free Cross Stitch Challenge Group on Facebook and sign up via email. Because they're only sending these via email. They used to post them to the Facebook group, but they're not doing that this year. They're just sending them through email. So these get emailed to me every month. 
So February stitching challenge is um, 4,000 stitches. I did not, I did not submit February's or January's count to that. So for January, I will show you. I did fill out my stitching log though. So for January, so I have my stitching log. Uh, 477 was on January 22nd. That is the day I had the most. I had 5,394 stitches. 395 stitches. And then I did the stitch count was 3,400 or 3,000 stitches. I did more than that. I did 53.94, so I actually did the bonus too. But I did not submit my points for January. I failed to do it, and I actually didn't have this completely filled out until today. So, um, creativelycrafting.com. You can see that down there, creativelycrafting.com. You can go there, find out some information about it. You can also go to the free, F-R-E-E, -E, capital, um, F-R-E-E, -E, Cross Stitch Challenge Group, and get more information there. Um, for Magazine Monthly Challenge, last month they had Baringo. I didn't do much on my Baringo board. I only had four squares full filled. I didn't do too much on that. It was fun, but yeah. They have another pop-up challenge that starts tomorrow. <laughs> Wee! So that was fun. I apparently paused and then stopped and then didn't I recorded I thought I was recording uh, this stuff for you so February um, those of you that have watched my channel I'm now into haul we are doing haul 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 is what we're doing because I was almost gonna stop the video um, but yeah we're doing haul so um, I had like a good chunk of this probably about 10 minutes of this already recorded oh, at least what I thought was recorded but yeah it wasn't recorded so I get to redo it again so this is take number two of this section of my video at least this portion of it so ah, take number two <laughs> um, those of you who know um, and who have been around a while know of excuse me Garon Toten bags they do grime guards and project bags of the month I am in their 11 by 11 size Grime Guard of the Month um, subscription, and I failed to show you January's Grime Guard of the Month. So we have Silver Snowflakes for January. And usually what happens with their Grime Guards and their project bags is the project bag of the month and the Grime Guard of the month are made out of the same fabric. Um, the Grime Guard of the Month for 11 by 11 is $13 a month. So for $13, they send me a Grime Guard. And I have a whole slew of them because I've been in their Grime Guard of the Month since they started it about two and a half, three years ago. So I have many Grime Guards. Hoping eventually to switch over to the project bags because I really like their project bags. Don't have any of their project bags down here with me at the moment. But um, I have been uh, given, granted, I've won a couple of the Grime Guard of the Month project bag. Uh, drawings because every month they put all their all their um, of the month people in a drawing the grime guard of the month people get a project bag the project bag of the month people get a notions pouch that matches their grime their bag for the month so um, January is silver snowflakes so the project bags for January were made out of the same fabric so that is January's I didn't mention it to you in the last video apologize for that I had it here I just forgot it February's is super fantastic because it is flamingos yep and so the project bag is the same fabric so thank you Gary and Ronnie from Garan Toten Bags for the wonderful grime guards hopefully they will let me at some point switch over to the project bags because um, I now have a lot of grime guards so yeah I think I'm probably going to try and switch over to the project bag soon. So, those of you that have watched my videos um, and the videos that I put on my channel in December with um, that I recorded with my mom, we were opening the 12 Days of Christmas from Mo Bittner of Mo's Sale, M-O apostrophe S, 
S-A-L-E on Facebook. Um, every year you can sign up for their um, 12 Days of Christmas box. You pay for it a little bit every month. And in December, they send you a box of goodies um, labeled 12 Days of the Month. So uh, you can open them. You can open them all at once. You can open them one day each time. Um, Mom and I started ours on the 13th so we could open our last thing on the 24th. It was a really great, um, really great thing to do together. Last year it was great. We each got some different things, so that was pretty fun. But they also, on their Facebook group, they sell um, on Saturdays. They usually dye floss. They also dye fabric, but they usually dye floss. And it's usually cotton floss and silk floss. Well, over the last couple of years, um, I've been purchasing some Mosel flosses from their Saturday sale. And I have some new colors. I have six new colors of floss from Mosel. And this is silk floss. So the first color that I have for you is called Gold Rush. And you can see there's some um, distinct variegation in the yellow, especially right there. This is a uh, deeper yellow than it's showing, at least on my screen. This one is called Emerald City. It's a very nice emerald green, really bright green, very Christmassy. Emerald City. This one is called Caramel Apple. And it's a very nice rose into kind of a taupe color, caramel apple. This one is simply just black. I have black. This one is called Tabasco. And it's coming out more orange on my screen. I don't know how it's going to be in the actual video, but on my screen it's coming out more orange. This is more of a red orange, but you can see the variegation in it. It's pretty, pretty neat. And then this last one, um, they didn't have any more of the 100 yard Hanks, which is what I really like to buy. These are 100 yards. Um, and I was kind of bummed out. <laughs> so um, I, I got four, <laughs> four of the 17.4 yard Hanks. This one is called Glorious. So there's that one. It's kind of a purple, red, blue, pink peach. Purple, red, blue, pink, peach, and they're all slightly different, you know, because they're from the different batches. So, glorious. So, those are my Mo Sale silks for a couple of months because I didn't show you them last time. Okay. Mm. Oh, and they also came, um, the two orders that I got came with Nestle hot cocoa, which will be really good. I've been in kind of into hot cocoa. Um, I, I had hot cocoa, Swiss Miss hot cocoa a day or two uh, ago, and I think hot cocoa is going to be really good for me this week. So thank you very much for the hot cocoa. Thank you very much, Mo's, Mo Bittner from Mo's Sale, William Bittner. Um get into here. So, um, one of the other things that I got, um, was, uh, you know that, um, Cottage Garden Samplings has, um, started, has issued, um, a series called A Year in the Woods with, um, the fox. So I started getting it. Um, number two is the swans. I think I showed you on the last video that I got and I'd pick this one up. This one is called the Jackrabbit. So I did get them. I'm getting all of them. And I did pick up um, the Gentle Arts thread. I've been picking up some of the called for um, overdides for this, for these pieces. Um, my plan is to stitch them on 40 count. I've been really enjoying it. I went through, I don't have the 40 count um, called for for the year in the woods. And this is the 13 by 18 piece of Sassy's Fabbies that I have on hand. Um, this is called Storm Clouds. I don't know, I think I'd like to stitch them all, like the, 
there's a, a way that I saw these. Let me see if I can find it. Bear with me just a minute. I'm going to pause and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back again. So what I was looking at was um, there is a way that you can, they have a listing <clears throat> out there for stitching all of these kits in um, their season. Um, so winter, spring, summer, and autumn. So you can get fabric, so you stitch them all like this. This is a year in the woods. These are um, fabrics that you can get by Picture This Plus. Um, Mirage, Velt, Valor, and Oaken. <clears throat> um, my Crestage store that is ordering me these um, doesn't have the fabric um, on hand for this from Picture This Plus. They'd have to order it. But um, B Stitch Me, who is um, who does Friday Night Fight Night, the um, hand dyed fabrics that they make, um, they put them up for Fight Night on Friday nights, one, about once a month. It used to be every Friday. But um, I have some of their fabric, and they have a bundle for um, the. Um, they have a bundle available for the. Um, they have a bundle available for the Year in the Woods, and I'm actually thinking about ordering their bundle because it looks really cool. So um, yeah. Um, otherwise I get picture this plus now I do have some fabric on hand that I thought I was going to do for the um, the fox um, I have this piece of sassy's fabby's storm clouds fabric it's 40 count 13 by 18 piece be more than enough to do the fox on and it'd probably be more than enough to do all three of the winter themes on there but um, I got this piece this was um, stash that I got from Cross My Heart. Um, a friend of mine, Emily Van of EJV Designs, she passed away um, at the beginning of 2021. Um, her birthday was in the end of January. She passed away the first week in February last year. She had some health issues and uh, just wasn't able to overcome it. So um, Cross My Heart worked with her mom to get um, a lot of her stash sold. So this came out of Emily's stash. I don't think this piece is going to be <clears throat> as big as I'd want it to be to do all three of the winter themes. Um, like this picture shows. Do, 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 do. Let me see if I can get back to it. So you can do all three themes like here. 12, 1, and 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9, 10, and 11 on these colors of fabrics. I don't know that this piece of 13 by 18 Sassy's Fabbies is going to do it, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get it because Sassy's Fabbies, as far as I know, that Sassy's Fabrics are no longer available. So it's too bad that they're no longer available because I would buy more. This is a really pretty color. Um, I don't think I'm going to be using this for the um, year in the woods thing. I'm keeping it in there now. But look at this piece of fabric, you guys. Look at this. This is just, it's amazing. Beautiful. So I think this piece of Sassy's Fabbies, I'm going to relegate to a different, um, I'm going to relegate to another uh, piece later on. But I'm keeping it all together with um, this set. Um, as a piece that I'm going to be starting soon. This is this is going to be a new start coming up soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, all right. So back in December when I went to um, Stitching in the Springs Retreat, um, I picked up a piece uh Did I get this from, she had this sitting on the table. I don't, well, maybe I got this from Keepsakes. I, I don't remember, to be honest with you. This is Zuka, 
Alessandra Adelaide Needleworks, Zuka pumpkin. If you look at the picture, it looks quite variegated. So when I was at um, Stitching in the Springs retreat, um, Kat, the organi organizer for the retreat, who also works at the Mills Park Hotel in Yellow Springs, she um, has a friend out in Los Angeles um, that has a hand-dyed embroidery floss and um, whatnot company called Live and Die in LA, D-Y-E, Live and Die in LA. And while I was there, um, they had a, we had like a, a, basically like a trunk show. And, um, I picked up these flosses after I picked up my Zuka pumpkin. So I picked up, uh, Noxious and Brave. And I figured I was going to use these colors to do that. Um, the piece that I was going to use, um, I determined that milk chocolate was the fabric that I wanted to use. So my fabric for it came in. I got a um, 18 by 25 piece of milk chocolate. I think it's super big, but I got my milk chocolate in for my Zuka pumpkin. And so this is my color choice for the Zuka pumpkin. Tell me what you think. I think it's going to be absolutely pretty. I'm looking forward to doing it. So this is probably going to be a new start for me uh, later on this year as well. The Zuka pumpkin. So my piece of milk chocolate fabric finally came in. Much to my happiness. From a Zuka pumpkin. Yay! So that is another fun thing that I will have to work on later this year. Looking forward to stitching with that. Yay! All right. <laughs> so last bit of haul. Congratulations. This is the last bit of haul. Last bit of the Super Bowl. No, I'm just kidding. So my cross stitch star here in Columbus, cross my heart. On Super Bowl Sunday, they have a tradition. They had to not do it for the last couple of years, but they've had a tradition of um, having a Super Bowl Sunday cross stitch sale. So they open their doors from about 11 to three on Super Bowl Sunday and stitchers can come in and stitch. They have everything at 15% off. They usually have some clearance tables in their back stitching room and um, yeah. I got stuff today. So um, one of the things they were giving out too were uh, tote bags today. I got 99 problems, but a stitch ain't one. That is my free tote bag from Cross My Heart. Thank you, ladies. All right. So my bag of a lot. Oh, dang it, and it happened again, and I didn't know it, and I was through, and I was saying goodbye. And then I realized that I wasn't recording anymore. Ugh. So I was getting ready to show my clearance bag of stuff from the Super Bowl Sunday sale at Cross My Heart Limited. So I'm not going to reopen these up <clears throat> because, well, the first thing I got, I'm going in different order, was All Through the House, Christmas and Cross Stitch. This book was copyright 1985. Let me double check that. Uh, copyright 1985 by Oxmoor House. Um, this book was $3, hardback, you know, typical hardback book, $3. But there is one pattern in here that really struck my fancy, and I figured for three bucks, when, why the heck not? It's this one right here. And I'm trying not to show the pattern. But there you go, three bucks right there. It's an 80 by 80 piece. And I was thinking, this Mo sale, emerald green. Mo sale, emerald green. I set the book down and now I lost the page. Mo sale, emerald green. Wouldn't that be lovely? 
stitched on that with a red, a Christmas red. Yeah. So I picked this up from the clearance in the back for $3. That was a great find. They had a Lizzie Kate basket that I ended up picking up. So I got the entire set of Lizzie Kate's Merry Christmas by the Letter. The entire set. I will take out one of these again and show you two. This is the set that I got. It spells out Merry Christmas. It spells out Merry Christmas. My favorite time every year, remember and rejoice. Yuletide comes. Christ is born, holy night, ringing bells, icicle glows, snow falls, time together, magic moments, angels sing, season of joy. I got the entire set. So that's really cool. Yep, that's really cool. I'm just trying to get it packaged back up. Another set that I got was the Lizzie Kate, the 12 Blessings of Christmas. This is what, what it is. I even got the tree topper from 2006. The 12 Blessings of Christmas. This one, peace, home, faith. Family, caring, giving, song, joy, charity, hope, friends, love, and the Christmas tea topper. Tree topper. Got the whole set of them. And then this was also a half off. This is Shepherd's Bush. This is called, what is this called? The Dancing Lamb. I got the pattern and the button. And it was half off. Both of them were half off. So pattern was $3. The button was 6 So for $4.50, I got the button and the pattern. That button is cute. I could probably turn it into a needle minder. But look at that. Dancing lambs to greet the spring, flowers, sun, birds that sing. Cute. Shepherd's bush. So that was the clearance from Cross My Heart today. Still recording. That's good. Got it in my bag. And then I shopped the, um, the regular store. Um, all the regular store was 15% off, so that was fun. Um, I have, I've had this set of patterns on my radar for a little bit now, so I went ahead and picked them up today since they were on sale. Um, this set of patterns is by Puntini Puntini. It's When I Think Of, and it's the four different seasons. So when I think of spring, when I think of summer, when I think of autumn, and when I think of winter. Now all of these were stitched on 32 count Belfast raw linen by Zweigart. I instead picked up because I didn't, I, I was trying to, I didn't think a 30, a, a 40 count would work because of these little buttons. I mean, look at those buttons. The buttons wouldn't fit right on 40 count. So I was looking for 32 count. And I came up with a piece of 32 count platinum Belfast. 32 count platinum Belfast. Now this is gonna be folded in half still. So it's kind of a very pale greenish, kind of grayish, brownish color. I think it'll go really well. I think the whites will show up pretty good on it. Um, and everything like that. So. That is the piece of fabric that I got to stitch these on. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do them all in um, pillows like they're shown here or if I'm going to do them all in one. I have a piece 
or if I'm going to do them all in a, in a, in a column and um, do them that way. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. Um, but the piece I got is 12 inches wide and like 20 some inches long. So I could do them all in one piece and figure out a decorative border in between to separate the four seasons. Um, I don't know. But I think I like I like the pillow idea like that um, because I have a dough ball now and um, I can just plop them into the dough bowl, leave them sit out or find a little teeny shelf and put them above my monthly things. Um, so anyway, I got 32 count Platinum Belfast for that and I think it'll go really, really nicely on there. Um, so that is all I got and that is it after three stoppages that I wasn't expecting and having to do this. It is now 11 o'clock and I've got to watch the news and go to bed because I'm kind of tired. I've been up a lot today. Um, so yeah, to put that in there. That needs to go back over here. Um, this needs to go in the bag too also. All right, so that is all I have for you this week. Hope you're staying well. Hope your team won the Super Bowl. If you've watched the Super Bowl, I am safe from the Super Bowl this year, as I am pretty much every year. I'm not a football fan, not really a Bengals fan, not really a Rams fan, not a football fan, and I'm certainly not a Buckeye fan either. But anyway, that being said, hope you found something in this video that will enable you to go out there and get some stash enhancement. And uh, yeah, I'd like to enable you and hopefully you'll be willing to try something new. I uh, hope you enjoyed a little bit of crochet because yes, I do crochet, not very much. I'd like to change that a little bit. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my blanket making. Um, you enjoyed the quick. I'm looking forward to getting more into the quick and the thread and the um, embroidery, embroidery murder mystery by Amanda Lee. Um, looking forward to stitching more on some prompts this next week and um, finishing up February strong. Um, hoping to finish or to get working on Let It Snow for Wibgo by Stitch Rovia and um, yeah, just kind of just kind of working out on some things, just doing stuff randomly here and there. Um, I'm kind of taking it easy this year. Um, I'm not really working on too many Facebook groups. I need to figure out what I'm doing for semi sane if I'm doing anything for February. I haven't decided yet, decided yet what what that is. Um, but I need to figure out what's going on for March as well. So in the next couple of weeks, I've got to figure out my March. And hopefully um, the next video will be out before that, before my plans. So this is... February. This is February 13th. So my next video is planned for the 27th, which is also the Whipgo draws. I need to add that in there. Um, do to do to do, do whip go draw. Save. Whip go draws. I'm going to make that purple. Luco draws. There we go. Anyway, um, but anyway, hopefully you have you have um, some great stitching coming up. Um, so next week I'm going to be working on prompts. Um, I'm going to be in the office Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. Thursday is my wedding anniversary. I have Friday off and the following Monday. Um, I may have a video next weekend. Um, as opposed to waiting until the end of the month. But the 27th of the month is the next whip go draw for March. So um, if I don't have it next weekend, it'll be probably the weekend after. And I'll have um, probably most of a February wrap up. And then um, some more March plans for you. Don't really have anything going on really in the month month of March. 
nothing else going on except my birthday is the month of March. <laughs> I turn 52. No, 51. 51. Yeah, I turn 51. <laughs> I turn 51. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting old, you guys. So next uh, March is my birthday. April we have um, the Buckeye Game Fest. May um, nothing really going on in May. Um, June we have origins. Oh, I forgot to tell you one of the other things I'm doing in June. One of the other retreats I'm going to StitchCon weekend weekend B. StitchCon weekend B is September. Or June 16th through 19th. I am going to Stitch Con Weekend B, you guys. That's another retreat that I forgot to tell you about. Ta da! Stitch Con Weekend B is in June. Looking forward to doing that. The Steel City Stitchers retreat was this last weekend. We had a big snowstorm last weekend, and uh, they still had a, quite a good turnout. It was in uh, Pittsburgh or the Pittsburgh area. And um, they had a pretty good turnout, and they had some videos there. So if you can, go to Steel City Stitchers and watch some of their videos. And um, that's all I have for you this week, you guys. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're masking if you're being asked to mask. Hope you get your vaccines if you can. Um, stay safe, you guys. Be kind to each other. Be understanding. Um, things are changing here. And... Uh, things are going to be different from what you're used to. So anyway, that being said, I hope everything is going well for you. I hope you're just kind of hanging in there. Keep on keeping on because that's all we can do. And uh, until my next video, which may be next weekend and maybe the weekend after, um, hopefully I'll have some more updates for you and some more progress. Um, and maybe another blanket, a different blanket count for you. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. Take care. We'll see you next time. And Peace out for now. Bye.